There are a lot of three row SUVs on the marketplace, and this is the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which now joins the fight. There's a lot of vehicles from literally every brand, and we're gonna show you the limited edition today. We have already reviewed the Summit Edition. You can check that out on our channel, but let's take a deeper dive into the six cylinder powered Jeep Grand Cherokee L. We talk about three row SUVs all the time, and this is the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. It is longer, it is wider, it has more cargo space because you need that in a three row SUV. But before you go to the dealer and start looking at these vehicles, the salesperson's gonna try and sell you on this vehicle because that's their job. We're gonna give you information in 10 categories so when you walk into the dealer, you know what you want. We're gonna cover performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology. We'll also talk about features or options. We'll go around talking about design and quality. We'll talk about cargo, the value or the price. And then we'll talk about pluses and minuses. In the end, we will give you a car coach reports total. In the description below, we will list all of the other competitors and links to those reviews so you can do all your homework in one place. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything because we're also giving you car smarts tips so that you can get the best value on a vehicle like this. Now there are two engines, there are four different trim levels. We have covered the Summit, you can check that out up here. Today we're gonna to talk about the Limited, which has the V6 engine, and what options are available on the lower two trim levels, and the other review will cover the upper two trim levels. Let's get started with Under the Hood. Under the hood of our test vehicle is a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine, rated at 290 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you want the V8 engine, it means it's gonna be more expensive, but you get the 5.7 liter V8 engine with a 357 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque, and the V8 engine is only available on the Overland or the Summit Edition. This is the Limited Edition. All engines are backed up by an eight-speed automatic transmission. Start off with performance on this six cylinder engine. In the sport mode, it's got a little bit of lag to get going, screaming a little bit, and we're at 60. So, in the sport mode, this certainly is underwhelming in comparison to the V8. Of course, it's got two more cylinders in the V8 engine. But this vehicle does have more than enough get up and go. But when you're looking at other vehicles in the category, especially looking at the Explorer, the Traverse, the Palisade is a little about the same, but some of the other vehicles have more performance. And that's a big factor when you're buying a vehicle like this. Again, it's a personal taste. Now we've changed to the automatic mode. Now this is gonna be your all around best choice for driving. Now what you're getting out of that is you're getting a kind of rough ride because this is a real truck. This vehicle has huge off-road capability, but that's not really what they're selling it for. Most people that are buying this vehicle are taking it to the store, taking their kids to school, going to the airport and life, just life stuff of getting around. And if you want the space and the towing capacity, this vehicle has that. Towing capacity for the V6 engine is 6,200 pounds. If you need more, 7,200 pounds of towing capacity when it comes to the V8 engine. So that thousand pound difference is also more expense and more fuel economy loss. So kind of look at all your numbers when you make those decisions. And then of course, check with your insurance agent because those rates could be different between the two engines and also the cost. So it's gonna be more expensive to insure. So just know that in your head. But if you need that V8 and you're hauling a trailer, that's a huge important factor to consider. Fuel economy on this engine is 21 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. Combined, compared to the others in the category, pretty impressive. You know, there's a lot on this vehicle and there's a lot of adjustments, especially if you're going off-road. That's when this vehicle can perform. We'll cover that in handling. But for daily driving, this vehicle rides pretty nicely. It's got really good balance of performance. Just a little bit underwhelming. I guess the problem is that they had us drive the V8s first rather than driving the six cylinders first. So we did drive the V8. You can check out that review up here. That's with Paul Bryan on our His Turn, Her Turn reviews. And we'll have other Grand Cherokee coming with the two row and you'll wanna check that out as well. So don't forget to subscribe. One thing to note, if you do want the V8 engine, it's on the Overland and the Summit trim level. So they're gonna be more expensive, not just for the motor, but all the goodies that come along with that. For performance for this limited edition L, it earns a six. Now, when it comes to handling on a Jeep, 
If it's got the name Jeep across the front, I will promise you from executives all the way down, they all know this vehicle is going to perform off-road. And we got a chance to see that when we were in Michigan at the Proving Grounds and got to see its true capabilities. And let me tell you, it does handle more so than the other vehicles in this category because it's designed to be an off-road vehicle. So if you're thinking you want something more expensive, you're looking at a Land Rover. This would be a daily driver that you can take off-road if you want. It is not a Jeep CJ. It is a vehicle that allows you to go light off-roading, but it has the capability without any question with its multi-link suspension to do some serious off-roading. This vehicle also has active dampeners and an active grill shutter for better fuel economy. There is 10.9 inches of ground clearance in case you really did want to do some serious off-roading. One thing that's kind of neat is this vehicle is designed for up to 24 inches, two feet of underwater driving. I don't know if I want to drive it in two feet of water, but it can if you choose to or you have to. This vehicle has an active transfer case and a front axle disconnect. If you're serious about off-roading, you're going to want this. The Bronco offers it as well. The Bronco isn't really a direct competitor because it is a two row, but these are the kind of things you're starting to see on vehicles that are want to be and state we are designed for off-road. Jeep wasn't about to settle for just another SUV. This vehicle is serious about off-roading and extremely impressive. The ride is quiet. The brakes, also really good. Handling very specific because this is a full framed car. I really love what they did with this vehicle as far as handling aspects, just really, really nicely designed. Overall, when you're looking at handling, this vehicle earns a nine. There are 110 advanced safety features that are standard for all Grand Cherokee L's. And part of that includes that ample standard equipment, which includes the around view camera, the driver assist systems, rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning, lane centering management. You can also purchase night vision, 360 degree camera and a level two auto drive. I do love the backup camera as well. Now, when you get into these safety features and you're looking at like active lane assist, you can change those different drive modes as you need. Now, I prefer the vibration to be low strength or off personally. Lane management, you can pick whether you want the steering assist or the vibration, the lane warning. I'll take late for that. Steering assist strength, you choose what works for you. Then you've got your park sense. And if you're not sure what that's about, you just press the information and it will tell you. This is what this is about, park sense volume. You can pick your volume rear backup volume, blind spot alert. Now you can choose based on the information whether you want it off, the lights, or the chimes. Again, personal choices to meet your needs. Then you've got the blind spot assist, assist the electric power steering default, which you probably don't have to adjust other than sport or comfort, hill descent, and tire inflation. Now, in addition, there are other controls that can be adjusted in this vehicle. These are some of the safety feet. One of my favorites is family cam. I think it's great. What's going on back there? Well, I can see, especially when they're trying to do something behind that third or second row, I can see you. Love it. That's very cool stuff. Ford collision camera. There's your camera if you need for parking, your rear camera, your round view camera, third road headrest going down, and you can dim your rear mirror if needed, but you don't need to because you've got that camera in the back that I think is pretty cool. For off-road, you've got additional off-road pages that can be launched, and then you also have your apps that you can do different things. In this case, the vehicle, you can set up additional settings in here. It's a lot to learn, but you'll get used to it because those are the kind of things that you wanna play with before you go and buy one of these vehicles. But overall, when you're looking at the safety of this vehicle and what's included standard, pretty impressive. For safety, it earns a nine. When it comes to visibility, it's 80% of your driving decisions, so it's important to be able to see the roadway and what's going on around you. Now, there are some assistants that can make the job a little easier, but of course, your own eyes are always best. So when you're looking out the front, you've got a pretty muscular, beefy hood in front of you. We'll cover more of that in design, but you can see the roadway, but you have to adjust the seat accordingly. We're all built differently, what works for you. Going along the side, you have this sill. Now, that may not seem important to you, but where you rest your arm kind of gives you a gist of what it feels like in the second row. So if you're in a child safety seat, you don't want the 
the sill to be too high, it may look cool on the outside, but what it does on the inside is it limits your visibility. And just the same thing as looking out the back. Now looking out the back with the headrests up, you can see that I have two headrests that are up. And if no one's sitting in the third row, obviously it's smart to put them down. However, this vehicle has the additional option of the $2,200 package that includes the rear backup camera that's in the rear view mirror. When you press the rear view mirror, this turns into a camera and that is quite fabulous. And the reason it is, is you can actually see what's going on around you in a very crystal clear way. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you have an around view camera and a backup camera. And that is really important as well. But putting all this together, you have really impressive visibility. And for that, we gave it a nine. When it comes to seating, this is the most important seat in the house because you're going to be driving this vehicle. And if you're not comfortable driving it, it's never going to get more comfortable. So you have to really think about, we're all built differently. What do I need to have? What are my minimum requirements? Well, that is adjustable height seat belts, really good. And we're all built differently. So this belt doesn't cut across your neck. In addition, this vehicle has power seats with four-way lumbar, both driver and passenger side. I think that's important that you have a comfortable seat. Now, this does come heated as well as the steering wheel. And on the higher trim levels, you can get air cooled as well as massaging seats. Of course, that's on the higher trim level and it costs more. Our test vehicle has the air cooled three stage seats and the three stage heated seats. Thank you, because when it gets really hot out, you'll be grateful to have the lighter colored interior with the ventilated seats. But let's take a look at the second and the third row and let's see how much comfort there is back there with this larger wheelbase. Heading into the second row, you've got captain's chairs, which means this vehicle seats six. And there are child safety seats here as well as in the third row, which is important because not all three row SUVs have that. And you probably want this pass through here if you're putting child safety seats in the back because that would not be a fun time. Now these seats also have armrests, which are pretty wide enough for the average arm. And also has the manual netting, which is really good for keeping the sun out. It's also good for little children. If you have child safety seats that are rear facing of the sun in their eyes, it's a nice little feature to have. Behind both of the second row seats is netting. And then in addition, you've got your third area of climate control, heated seats, three stage for the second row, which I think is impressive at this $45,000 price point. Remember, this is a pretty well loaded vehicle and that's included in this package. And I think that's worthwhile, especially if you've got people that sit back here that wanna have hot cross buns. There's also ventilation, and of course, in addition to that, you can make other adjustments. And below the vents, you have your regular wall outlets, USB and USB-C charging, which is important these days. Further down, you've got more storage underneath and in front, and then you've got two cup holders. Now that second cup holder that's down on the ground, that could be good or bad. Great idea for keeping things there. Could be a bad idea if children are tripping on it, making their way back to the third row. Just something to think about. Everyone's got their own family situation and their own people that they carry every single day. So it's something for you to think about. Let's take a look at the third row and see how much space there is. And remember that these seats move forward and back allowing for more room. Heading back to the third row, I'm 5'8", so there is tons of room in the second row, and it is one of the best second row areas for space, for legs, for headroom in the category. Going back to the third row, you've got a lot of room back here. I am totally surprised. I mean, I'm 5'8", there's some good head space here for someone that's taller, definitely space for two people, not three. And there's only seat belts back here for two as well. There is cup holders, USB, USB-C charging, as well as some other little storage areas down here on the side. But overall, when you're thinking about this third row, it's pretty impressive. To get out of this second row, Jeep has created a new one-touch system where you lift up on this lever, the seat moves forward and out of the way, and now you have a ton of room to get in and out of the vehicle. Overall, when you're looking at seating for this vehicle, they've really thought about who's using this. They've really made it wisely designed. There's a few things I'd like to see, maybe an increase in material quality over vinyl. Of course, you can get whatever you want. You have to just step up for more money. But when you're looking at the comfort of the seats, especially for a long haul, your daily drive, this vehicle earns an eight for seating. When you're looking at technology, this center screen is about average for the category. There are some that supply much larger screens. We covered the Explorer, it was much smaller, but you're looking at the Kia and the Palisade 
and they are much larger. So you kind of have to look at what's important to you, but the fact is this car does offer what you need without having to go into some huge center screen. So when you go into the My Pages, you can customize it to meet your needs. Very cool. Going further over, you've got your media, which you can put whatever you need, your comfort settings, which you can again adjust on the controls below, but you got your heated seats, your air-cooled seats, your ventilated seats, you know, whatever you need, it's over here. It's really nice, again, and it shows it right here, and that's there all the time. So this allows you also to adjust your fan with your fingers, or there's actually levers down below. Then you've got your phone connection, your vehicle information. This is set for off-road pages, your controls, or your settings. You set that up however you'd like. Going into the apps, again, you've got different information, whether it's phone, wireless, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which I appreciate, vehicle information you may need. Again, there's tons of information here, and you can set all of your settings up, your system setups, how you want to make it personalized, and your others. Now, this allows you to bring in weather or assistance or market information, and there is an Alexa app that you can get. I believe it's in the higher trim levels, but this is something that has, is available on this car, so you can have Hey Alexa in your vehicle. Going back to the home screen again, you can adjust the sizing here. You see that there? And then of course, all of your information. They've done a really nice job improving the state of the art updated Uconnect system. Like I said, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. There's also a head up display as well as the digital rear view mirror. One of the optional audio systems, if you're really into audio systems, is the 950 watt 19 speaker Macintosh audio system and that's available on the higher trim levels as well. That is really state-of-the-art brand. If you listen to a lot of music and you're really informed on audio systems, you know that Macintosh is one of the best on the market. When it comes to technology for this vehicle, quite impressive. Works as stated, and Uconnect has won a lot of awards, and it earns a 10. When you're looking at features for this Jeep, you'll see that on the left side of the steering wheel, you have all of your adjustments for the screen between the gauges. And on the right side, you have your cruise control and more safety adjustments. There is a paddle shift setup on this V6 engine combination, as well as your wipers for front and rear are here. And then on the right side, you've got the downshift and your turn signal and your headlights. In front of you, you have this really cool digital screen. And as I said, when you change the buttons, you can also change the information in front of you based on what you want. On the stock on the left side is your fog lights and your downshift lever. On the left side you have your vent and then further down you've got your headlights and your dimming adjustments as well as your parking brake and your hood release. On the driver's side you've got two place memory seating and this is not real wood although it appears to be it's plastic and we'll cover that in quality. Further back you've got your adjustments for your mirrors and your window lifts and locks. In the center, you've got your ventilation across the top, very linear, nice and clean, all the way across, two-tone interior, very pretty, real stitching. You've got your auto off, your lane departure warning, your trash control, your emergency, and your park assist. Further down, you've got that center screen that we just covered in technology, followed below by all of the climate control buttons that are here, or you can do it digitally, whatever makes you happy. Below that, you've got USB-C, USB, and you have a 12-volt outlet and wireless charging. Really thought of everything. Over here, this is what the key fob looks like. Just so you know, it's got automatic start. This is your shifter right here, so you can turn it to whatever you want. And this is for your handling. Cover that in handling, your different drive modes. Two cup holders. In the center console, you've got two trays, the first tray and the second tray, and another deep well of storage in addition to your glove box and tons of storage in the door. On the overhead console, you can open up just the shade on the roof for the panoramic roof. It's part of that additional package, or you can open the vent, and then you've got your emergency warning setup and the ability to turn on lights if needed. This is the new trend, having it as a two-stop, so it just doesn't open all the way. But overall, when you're looking at features for this vehicle, it's pretty impressive. Lots of goodies in all three rows and impressive for this price point. It earns a 10. The all new design of the Grand Cherokee L is bigger. 
It's got two inches more legroom, seven inches longer wheelbase, and 15 inch longer body, which means there is about 16 more cubic feet of storage. Now looking at the front of this vehicle, you'll see these seven lines, which stand for the seven continents because Jeep is sold on a global basis. Now you'll notice this new look more chrome on the Limited versus the Summit and the Overland and the other trim levels. But this is part of what this is going to be the mainstream vehicle of the six cylinders. They're going to sell the most of these with this engine. You get the new LED headlights. Further down, you've got venting here that is used for the engine for cooling, as well as down here, and it's matte black. Gloss up here, matte down here, because if you get bugs on the front, you won't see it. That nice little chrome trim piece there just defines that this is a limited edition really nicely done as far as the whole design and it still has that jeep look our test vehicle has the 18 inch alloy wheels with michelin tires again there are different wheels on different trim levels and this is the appearance that they sent us on this fully loaded limited edition as we move our way back you've got the grand cherokee here to let everyone know but they don't realize it's an l until they realize how big this is compared to its competitor remember you're talking about a longer distance between the wheels which means you're going to have a nicer ride and we covered that in handling beyond the four doors which are right here you've got a nice third row window not all the three rows have good size windows for the third row and they certainly did not make this the penalty box and that's kind of what it ends up being in a lot of these vehicles unless you go to a full size like a suburban or a navigator that third row window is kind of short changed it is not here when it comes to the grand cherokee l Coming around to the back with your LED headlights, you've also got an upper wing that has a camera on the back for your backup camera and a squirter to keep it clean. Because a lot of times they get dirty and you either get out and wipe it down or you don't bother. Well, Jeep came up with a solution for that. The only other vehicle that has that is the Explorer. And again, that's on certain trim levels. The wiper is down here. I wish that was tucked up right underneath here. Just protects this wiper blade so you don't have to replace it because they are expensive. But also you won't hit it with an ice scraper. So just a few things you might see in upcoming Jeeps. Down here, you've got the L proving that this is a three row four by four. And on this side, you've got the limited trim level. If it's a Summit or a Laredo, it's listed there as well. Behind this cover is your trailer hitch. If you choose to get a trailer towing package, that's where it's hidden. So it looks really nice and clean across the back. Overall, that more chrome detail. They did a great job on redesigning this Grand Cherokee L. And for design, it gets a nine. We were really impressed with the build quality of this Grand Cherokee. 69% of it is from the U.S. as far as parts and components, and its final assembly is here in the United States. They've done a really nice job with your five-year, 60,000-mile warranty, and the material quality is good. There's a few areas I'd like to see improved, but overall, as far as fit and finish and color choices and design and how they really thought about who's using this vehicle, they've got a lot of premium products, especially when you go to the higher trim levels and they have the Macintosh audio and they've really thought about each trim level who's buying it and how much they can afford so for quality this vehicle earns a nine coming around to the back with the third row up you've got about 17 cubic feet of storage again this is an improvement over the previous generation because of the longer wheelbase underneath this cargo bed is a great place to hide things it also gets you access to taking down that spare tire that's tucked up underneath in addition, on this side, you've got more storage and a power outlet. Very good for tailgating. And this side is where you close the tailgate. You press the button down here. So if you're not that tall, a lot of times people can't reach the button that's on the back of the tailgate. Well, Jeep has a solution for that, and that is the button on the side. I think it's genius, actually, because if you press the button, the door doesn't close that fast. And it's adjustable, too, and you just hold the door when you press the button, and it will reset itself. Many vehicles have that. General Motors has it. Ford has it. But it's one of those things that if you could just press one button, it makes your job a lot easier. Now with the third row up, how do you get the third row down? Pretty simple. You pull this to put the headrest and it's down. Now the other side, same thing, pull. And now you have 46.9 cubic feet of storage. If you fold down the second rows, which are manual, it's 84.6 cubic feet of storage. Let me show you. With 84.6 cubic feet of storage, you can pretty much move anything from a flat screen TV to some drywall to 
whatever you need, moving your kid in and out of college. That's what's so good about this vehicle is there's more space. It's wider, it's longer, and that's what's gonna make this vehicle a pretty big success compared to its competitors. But remember, it's always about price. Speaking of price, the prices range from 36 to 65,000 on the high end. Our test vehicle came in at 45,000. For about $2,000, we got a lot of additional extras. Part of that $2,200 package included the panoramic sunroof and that very cool backup camera, which is kind of important when you have a vehicle of this size so you don't hit anything. When it comes to value for this vehicle compared to others in the category, this vehicle earns a nine. When you add up all 10 categories for the Grand Cherokee, it really performed well. Although the V6 engine didn't even compare to the V8, obviously there's two less cylinders, but I think it just didn't have that get up and go until you put it in the sport mode. And then it seemed like it was pushing just too hard. Now, again, this is a personal choice. That may be more than enough power for you, but that was one of the negatives on the V6 base engine. But as far as the plus side, there are tons of pluses, more space, more cargo, great technology, easy to use. This vehicle has good towing capacity and a lot of positive factors. I think they did a great job thinking about how do we redo this vehicle in a way that more people can use it and make it more functional for you on your daily basis. It has great towing capacity, especially with other cars in this class, huge class. You've got the Palisade, the Telluride, the Traverse, the Pilot. You've got the Explorer and you can go on and on and on. There's so many vehicles. Then you can also go slightly into that luxury category, especially when once you go up to the higher trim levels and you should check out that other video too like i said earlier where we cover the summit overall when you add up all 10 categories for the 2021 jeep grand cherokee limited 4x4 edition this vehicle earned an 88. now i did not cover every single little detail and i know you're going to have questions so put them in the comments down below i will get you an answer because i believe if you have questions you should have them all answered before you go into the dealer because it's very easy to be confused with everything else that's going on so do all your homework in one place carcoachreports.com and we have it in english and in spanish and if you like this video and you got value make sure to like and share it and subscribe we do appreciate the support and we're always putting up a lot of new cool stuff including the Grand Wagoneer and the regular Cherokee two row which is coming and we'll be covering that and I'll cover it first on my social media all platforms at Lauren Fix and we look forward to seeing you next time thank you so much for watching